All right, welcome to the presentation uh, by Wim Vermoos. Um, the topic is user requirements beyond ST2110. So this will be looking at maybe some uh, future ideas and you know why we need to have things other than just basic 2110. So take it away, Wim. Okay, do you have some, uh, some means to bring this forward? Oh, here. Wonderful. So welcome everyone. Uh, please be seated. Uh, user requirements beyond 2110, it's not so future and forward looking, at least it's what we think. So, uh, voila. Let's go there. EBU has uh, several groups and one of them is called the NBI, the New Building Initiative. Now, in the background you see here four new buildings, almost done. Uh, there's one in uh, Canada, in uh, England, uh, there's one in Belgium and there's one in Switzerland. There are many more to come. So that's quite interesting. All those new builders are looking at what, what, what will they do? Will they still uh, buy SDI or will they go IP? Well, they will go IP, that's for sure. So many broadcasters have buildings from the early 60s, in Europe that is. And here in the background, that's uh, where I used to work. That's, uh, that's the Belgium uh, National Broadcaster. And this building uh, is in Brussels and it's known as to be the heating place of Brussels. So there's more heat generated outside of the building than inside the building. So they have one choice or refurbishing or uh, just build something new. And uh, many of those just think the same, just bring everything down and build new places. So uh, this new building initiative, we think about three things. So it's not just about the bytes, but also about the bricks. How do you build these new buildings? Do we need big cable ducts? No, we want to go to maybe fiber, all the way fiber, and this is less space between def uh, different floors, so that's a good one. And also the behavior track. We also want new workflows, just not new technology for the sake of new technology. So the interesting fact is we asked those broadcasters and they said, no, we don't want any legacy. So new buildings with limited legacy, they said. All of those buildings are smaller, but the nice thing about IPs, well, there are uh, routers that are 32 times 400 gigabit per second, two units high or even one unit high, so they can transport and switch 10,000 video streams at once. So I think scaling down, we're good with IP. Then non-functional requirements like flexibility, scalability, shareability, and also reliability, as SDI was, and secure, as SDI was, maybe security through obscurity. Uh, another one, savings are, till today, still not expected. And the last one, common challenges. Standardization was at that time still moving, it's quite stable at the moment, but the cost model for many of those members it not, is not sure. If we move to software-based, how do you do it? You buy an SDA matrix and it runs for 12 years, but what about software and license models? So that's still a, 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 a big a big problem to calculate the real cost of the project. And finally, completely at the end, it's too small, it's uh, less parking space. And I was quite happy that many of those broadcasters, their main concern was less parking space. This is actually very good for us. This means that technology won't be an issue. Uh, well, <coughs> so flexibility, scalability, shareability, probably I don't need to explain what those beasts are for you guys. So flexibility, you can transport whatever, SD, HD, UHD, future format we want over IP. It's like a container ship, whatever you put in the container, you transport it over the ocean, you pull it out, and that's it. Scalability, I just mentioned the speed of these days, uh, Ethernet fabrics, they're quite high. So for 720p60, 10,000 video streams, no issue at all. For the shareability, usually I talk about the JTNM roadmap, you find it there at the back of the booth. Uh, because going to more shareability, that's probably going to more software and to the green part of the JTNM roadmap. But the two most important things is actually reliability. And uh, in this solution, we changed the network from SDI to IP and security. And there I noted the lack or even the basic cyber security hygiene is becoming an issue. There are a few examples uh, in Europe like uh, France Television 5 or Tele 5 that was brought down completely. So we need to be mindful of this. This is not what you want to have. So, 
I'll skip over the roadmap and I just want to show you how big the ID is in, in, uh, around Europe. So there were a few proof of concepts trying out 2022 in the early days, then go to 2110 here, and then new buildings, TV2, Norway, NRK, Bergen, RTL City, live. Those are live. They don't have any issue, they're live. And then you see a huge deal building at the same time. So you have TPC, BBC, and CBC. Those are the big members that are building at this moment. So they needed to have solutions right now. And then there's a big bunch of other members that's coming just behind. So all the knowledge that we have should be spread amongst all of those. So there's a huge opportunity for uh, academies or schools or teaching more what all these things are about. And these are not all the broadcasters. I just don't have the timings of these. So you see there's a, a lot coming. So we travel back a, a little bit in time and we had our network technology seminar at the 19th of June in 2018. And the technology seminar was all about 2110 and we invited, well, a lot of industry smartest to talk about it. So, first guy that came up and did a keynote, well known here, uh, is Thomas Edwards. And uh, I hope I changed, yes, VP Engineering from Walt Dis Disney Television. So, sorry I said Fox before. I don't do it twice. Uh, so we had a presentation, IP, the promise, the progress and the path to perfection. But where are the full stack systems? So we said, well, we have these systems, but where is DHCP? Most of them you need to configure manually. And uh, what about the ISO 4 registry? You need to plug it all manually. That, that's quite horrible. And ISO 5 connection management, where is it? LLDP, if you want to do something more. So this was the opening statement of the network technology seminar. Then we had Felix Poulin from uh, CBC, is the director at the, at the engineering lab of CBC. So quite an influential guy at the moment because he's testing all these new boxes. And he was doing a presentation on their uh, new maison, the Radio Canada. And he gave an update and the lessons learned so far. And I just take one quote, what he said. He says, we need or we demand a full stack solution. You want to plug it in and it should work. That's what they say. So let's look at the BBC guys. Uh, Mark Patrick uh, is a lead architect and he presented, he gave an update on, uh, on their uh, project uh, in BBC Wales Cardiff. The sentence is a little bit longer, but he says, well, we need to see a confident leap from the R&D lab available product uh, towards an available product. And by the way, this is why this year you don't see a big booth full of boxes, but you see actual boxes that will be released and tested on that wall. So that's a big, uh, the big difference here this year. Uh, another guy, another project in, uh, in Switzerland, the Metecno project, the full IP future of SRF and TPC. He says, well, there are a lot of learnings, but we need to share more. There's a lot of learnings that need to be shared, otherwise there will be maybe some problems in the future and we need to share it openly so at that moment there were a few guys well i think almost a full jtnm admin board was there at nts as well and they said learning about all these uh, things that were just said we need something like the jtnm enterprise profile that was the name at that time and later on it became the jtnm uh, tr1001 document uh, this guy as well, uh, well known here, uh, Jack Douglas. We asked Jack to uh, do a presentation to show uh, our members that there are a lot of inter interrupt testing and demonstrations going on. So Jack uh, was there to talk about 2110 and the 2059 tests. But then they got a really tough question uh, out of the room. And I think the person is even here sitting. And he said, why are these tests done in a closed room and why do other industries make their tests just publicly available? Well, I, I would say this is what's just being done on that side of the wall. You see publicly those tests being made available. So there is a lot of openness at this moment. To come back to the first installations, they suffer a lot, but they provide a lot of learnings as well. So to give a few of these uh, after party events, uh, we are thinking about using SDI as a firewall. <laughs> yeah, it's true. 
uh, January 2019, so that's not, not so long ago. Hey, can you plug our truck? We just new, need 2 times 63 ampere to plug the truck. That's not a lightweight solution, I think. As a user, I need those gaps be filled into shipping products in 2018, that's a year ago, so that I can build my new headquarters facility. Hey, thank you for your email with the SDP file. An email? Are you serious? An SDP file, it should be transferred in some way, right? Or, hey, we need to configure all 500,000 multicast addresses manually. Well, imagine if that would be a truck and you drive to another facility and you want to connect in your IP-based way, then you need to reconfigure all those addresses on the fly. So there's maybe some sort of a gap that needs to be filled here. Now, at EBU, we don't like to just publish all those negative things on a wall. We would like to do something positive with this. So how can we bundle these complaints into a positive contribution? And this is where we came up with, maybe you saw it somewhere uh, already, uh, we came up with something that we call the pyramid for media nodes. And actually, the top of the pyramid, that's already done. That's why it's green. And we say that's the media transport. The single link video 2110-20, that's out there. You can buy it. And we want software-friendly devices, also for Dash 21. Universal and multi-channel and low latency audio and stream protection in Dash 7. That's, that's out there, you can buy it. Then what was less available, but I, I'm glad to see it more at NAB, by the way. Uh, we talk about PTP v2 configurability with SMPTE and IAS profiles, multi-interface PTP redundancy, and maybe less available synchronization of audio, video, and data essences. Indeed. Third one, discovery and registration. Uh, why we did we put it on this pyramid at IBC? We had a few members coming at us and they said, well, it's out there, it's on the booth, but we went to vendor X and they said, sorry, you cannot buy it. And that was quite strange for us. So we wanted to give the industry a, bit of, a little bit of a push uh, with this pyramid and say, well, just make it available, put it on sale, that we can buy it. We have all these buildings coming up, so we really need it. And then the large deployments like CBC, Actually, that's the largest deployment I know. These guys see big differences or big problems in configuration and monitoring. They say, we need DHCP. Please, come. That's nothing of the future. Everybody's been doing this for many, many years. So please, let's use DHCP in our industry, please, as DNS. And open configuration. Those guys have parts all across Can uh, Canada. So they don't like to drive around, they just want to configure behind their seat all the, all the equipment or monitor from one space. And at least at the bottom here, I mentioned it already, security. And there are some good initiatives. And by the way, there's a, an initiative that I should add here that's already there, that's BCP003, uh, and that's for show there on that side. Okay, so this is just a high-level overview is the pyramid, but there's a document behind this. That's uh, a tech document you can download for free on the EBU website, that's tech 3371. And actually it was published, and at the same time, there was another document that popped up. Uh, now, let's maybe <laughs> first say this. We wanted great flexibility. Well, we noticed that with great flexibility, there comes great complexity. And it's a key moment in time to get it right, to get all those parts working together and really get it. So we came up with this document, uh, and the response from JTNM was quite fast, and the response was the recommendation TR1001-1-2018. This didn't cover all of the things that we just mentioned. It covers few of them, but already very important ones. I can go over the pyramid and highlight in blue what's really covered in this new document, but maybe it takes us too long to go in depth over all those, so I'll just show it. There's a little bit about DHCP, the PTP, multi-interface redundancy, stream protection, and all the ISO 5, 4, and LLDP things, which are now included in the TR document. So it's really important to get it from the future zone into the reality zone. So we came up with uh, another document, not just a pyramid, but also a checklist that you just can go by uh, every vendor and say, well, 
Are you compliant with this? Do you have Dash 20 really for sale? Okay, check the box. Do you have this Dash, uh, dash 21 uh, for wide receivers? Do you have a wide receiver instead of narrow receivers? Because the wide receiver is the universal receiver. So we have this list made available so that there could be some sort of more of a dialogue between uh, people who will buy solutions and people who really sell solutions. Uh, let's see. So you can download also this uh, pyramid document uh, from the website, including the document that uh, Mr. Kieran is holding in his hand. And uh, by the way, EBU also published a, a statement, a position document. So there's a technical committee of EBU that published uh, this week, in the beginning of this week, a position document that states that every of our members they want to go to 2110 and they want to have 2110 including all the NMOS stuff on top to make it a real solution. Any questions? Uh, hello. Um, so having now read your testing criteria, you've done a very good job of transmitters in your green in the green part and the some parts of the yellow and red but there's one really difficult one uh, for receivers which is going to be synchronization audio, audio video and data essences because there's all manner of ways things can do that and first of all I would add it's shocking that people are not doing this you go all the effort to do PTP and then you don't synchronize things you use it as a FIFO you might as well just just on IP over a circuit and just push things how do you envisage testing synchronization on these devices and their limits do we need a document about this about how devices should actually behave, not that it sh there should need to be a document. Well, I can actually say that testing is not an issue. Uh, we devised a way in our list tool to do the testing. We still need to implement it, by the way. We don't have it implemented yet. Ah, okay. Uh, but we can uh, do a testing of synchronization because we have the RTP timestamp, and then we can test that uh, video essences are in sync or audio essences are in sync if we can capture this in one uh, PCAP file. Uh, but maybe the better question, and that's not to me to ask it, but that's to the SEMTI community, is uh, how they uh, want to tackle the question about synchronization more on an automatic way instead of tuning like we used to do in the good old ways uh, with IS audio and uh, SDI video. So it, will you be defining limits for this synchronization, i.e., can I have... There are practical limits in devices. Will you be de defining those constraints because they're not... They might be buried somewhere, but they're not clear, and they're not pra they don't practically work at this point. Uh, I think there are some limits, and uh, uh, probably this is why I advocate for a wide receiver as well, because the limit, if you want to synchronize multiple streams, you need to have the buffer depth uh, to do so. So there will be a practical limit. All right. Well, thank you very much.